as we talk weekly with the Mason County Sheriff's Office. Uh, today on the air with me, I've got Ryan Sperling, Chief Deputy, and Jason Drackably, the lieutenant there for Mason County Sheriff's Office. And we're talking about crime stats and some uh, movement within the department. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How are Thank, you? I am well. Thanks for coming on the air with me today. And uh, first things first, let's start with some crime stats. Last week, uh, Sheriff Salisbury was on. He says, well, we're getting close to that first 70 degree day. And when things turn 70 degrees, uh, people go a little Looney Tunes uh, about perhaps because they haven't seen the weather like that. We're not there yet. But what are the crime stats telling us these days? Well, a year to date, do a comparison over 2016 and 2017, looking from January to where we're at now in April. The, the North County's down about 11.2% uh, as far as overall crimes, and I can get into the specifics of, of the different crimes that we track. Uh, the South County's down uh, 3.85%, and then the whole county is at a 7.7% drop in overall crime that we track. And the crimes that we particularly track are the more violent ones, arson, assault, burglary, uh, narcotic violations, larceny or theft, motor vehicle theft, and sex offenses. Do you have any um, ideas of why they are down? I know we talk a lot about knowing that there's you know, more folks out and about, and especially over the last couple of years with the North, the North End office there, but then also to letting people know if, if you're going to get arrested, we will put you in jail and things like that. So talk to me. Do you have any ideas why? Well, right now it's interesting, but there is a trend that across the United States, uh, the crime stats are down. Oh, okay. Right now. If you look across the board, uh, they're a little bit less than they were. But at the same time, some of our violent crimes in the spring after a long winter, at least my experience over the years that I've been involved in law enforcement, uh, tend to come to the forefront. So we've had some violent crimes in our area, mm -hmm. but the crime stats as a whole are a little bit down. Okay. One of the things we're, we're looking at, because the North Precinct, you know, the, the sheriff worked very hard to get that building up there and through uh, some partnerships with some uh, local families up there, he was able to acquire the building and they were paying for it out of our budget. And then uh, it ended up getting put in a place where the county pays for it now, but we have that North Precinct up there. And when we first moved up there, it was uh, three years ago, March, oh, we, wow, had, okay. uh, we had 254 burglaries that the year before. Uh, the first year that we got into the precinct and we didn't have any increase in people, it's just that our people were up there and didn't have to drive back and forth to get to their computer or to enter evidence. So they were up in the north end more and a little bit more visible. And we saw a big reduction, about 150 less burglaries the next year. So wow. we were down uh, quite a bit from 254 down closer towards 100. And then we stayed there. Or, I'm sorry, I misspoke. It wasn't 150. It was down 100. So it went down to 150. And it stayed there for a year. And then this last year, we dropped below 100. So we actually had 99 burglaries. That means there's 150 less victim families in the north end. Can we tie it directly to the North Precinct? No, you can't tie it, but that's part of the, wow. the equation. We were also uh, arresting anybody and everybody that had warrants at that time. And right now, as a result of different things, we've had to put a cap on the jail. So that's something we're going to really watch closely. Interesting. Uh, and with these crime stats, uh, the sheriff and under sheriff have also uh, structured quite a bit of reorganization within the agency and that was one of the things we were going to talk about and Lieutenant Drackleby has just recently promoted from sergeant he's been our detective sergeant for years and he's going to actually be taking over the North Precinct. Oh very nice so how long have you been with the sheriff's office? Uh, about 25 years now. Oh wow okay very nice and so tell us a little bit about the duties then you'll be taking over with in the North End. Well we're, we're restructuring uh, to have a lieutenant in charge of the South End and a lieutenant in charge of the North End and then uh, those two lieutenants are going to be reporting to one chief Okay. Uh, won't be Chief uh, Ryan here, uh, Chief Osterhout. And um, we, we've split up all the, the programs between the two of us. Um, lieutenant Adams is uh, the other lieutenant, and he'll have the south end of the, of the um, county. And he's got uh, particular specialties in, in training and, and um, some other things. And, I, I mean, I've got a list of them. You want me to read those out? You can or? talk. This some of the some of the things that you're doing. It's... 
some of the main things, one of the nice things too is uh, the two lieutenants, since they know their precincts or they're going to yeah. know their precincts real well, we're actually going to be shifting some of the PIO or the public information officer duties. I'll still oversee the program, and, but I'm moving to the criminal investigation division, which is in charge of the detectives and the evidence and that type of thing. And the lieutenants will be in charge of their individual precincts and they will be the contacts because they'll know what's going on in the precinct for the media, for any major sure. events. So that's one of the things, uh, and uh, Lieutenant Drackleby just went through PIO school, and he's actually been the PIO, the main PIO, for this search that we've had for the missing hiker, and he may even be able yeah. to talk a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, this last week we've been uh, up in uh, the Cushman area searching for uh, Mr. Kroll, and he's... Uh, missing still still we we've had to suspend the search um, temporarily we've got one more um, thing that we're going to do up there uh, tomorrow and then we're going to have to call the search off oh, wow. we've had people up in the the hills way up into the park itself into the snow into the avalanche areas as far as we could go without getting them hurt um, we've got one particular area of interest that on friday evening uh one of the olympic mountain rescue crews came upon uh, and that'd be a set of tracks that uh, led into an avalanche can't guarantee that those tracks belong to the um, missing person but uh, it's probably the best piece of evidence that we have right now. Wow. Um, on Sunday, I believe we had over 70 volunteers up in, in the area helping out searching. Uh, I believe we've expended hundreds of hours of um, manpower in, on this mission. What are the conditions up there? Is still a lot of snow? or uh, very, A lot of snow over this uh, last week. If you had looked at the weather, we had an inch and a half to two inches over every day up until, I think, Thursday. And he was reported missing on Monday. Um, so it, the the snow level was up and it was down and it was up and it was down and that was just creating a, a worse um, scenario for avalanches and endangering uh, any of the help that was up there. The first day of the search, we had some uh, what are Olympic Mountain Rescue folks, Omar, we had pushed them up as far as we could, but they got into uh, areas where they could start seeing avalanches and, and oh, we had wow. to pull them out. We, yeah. And we had um, the family came in uh, all the way from, I believe it was New Jersey, isn't that where so they're from? Back east. And uh, they've been with us the whole time, and they've been extremely concerned, one, about their son, and two, they they told us, you know, don't let anybody get hurt yeah. doing this. And, you know, uh, that's a hard thing, really hard thing. Um, those parents were upset, and, and um, they'll be leaving on Tuesday, and we're going to stay in, talk, in contact with them, um, trying to make sure that... Uh, Hopefully we can search that area of interest again once the avalanches are, are settled and um, the weather gets better. And that could be a month. It could be two months. Um, wow. Thank you for that update. It was important. I know the, a lot of the listeners and viewers uh, have been following that. Ryan, so tell me about your transition now to overseeing the detectives in the criminal investigation unit. Is that right? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? He's going to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Jason's been the detective sergeant for the last uh, 15 years or so? No, nine years, but uh, nine years, okay. 18 years. So Feels like 20 15. in detectives. So he's been in detectives for 20, and this is an area within the agency that I'm not as familiar with as the patrol side. So okay. With my close to 30 years, it's mostly been a patrol, and then I had my six-month stint in the jail, which was a big education last year yeah. as a temporary chief. But uh, the sheriff and the undersheriff really have... Uh, you got to appreciate their vision. Uh, they're looking five to ten years out. They're looking, what are the needs of Mason County five years from now. <clears throat> what are the trends that we're seeing in crimes? We have increased crimes in the cyber crimes. We have uh, trafficking, those different things that we're looking towards and trying to, you know, get that view and say, how does the Mason County Sheriff's Office need to be structured to best serve the citizens of the county five to ten years? And I, you just got to appreciate a sheriff and an under sheriff who are coming, you know, the They've been around doing this for a long time, yeah. and they're still looking out. They're still looking into the future and saying, even after we're gone, how can we best structure this agency so that the citizens are best served? Because they're both members or yeah. community members, and they want this agency to continue to progress. Mason County Sheriff uh, Officers uh, Ryan Sperling and Jason uh, Drackleby. It was very nice to meet you, Jason. And Ryan, good to see you. We'll uh, get you guys both back in here a little more often to see how things are going. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it very much.